Hello everybody. Uh, this is actually a tweet that uh, Matthijs Dierks uh, found on the internet, and it refers to an article I wrote uh, that you might have seen as well on the Control 500 uh, uh, page, uh, which is actually sort of inspired of which uh, inspired Alessandra to ask me to come and do this talk. So I don't know anybody seen this article? Already read it? Read it? That's not. Oh, that's quite a few. Um, I will repeat some of the things that are in there, obviously, but I will try to, actually, I have half an hour, so or half an hour, including questions, so I will try to go into more depth, and actually also try to answer some of the, uh, the harder questions in the sense of how I actually got to implement this. There won't be much technical detail, I won't go into programming or anything, I will be sticking to the ideas behind these things, but still I try to make it more tangible so that you, if you have any ideas of it, uh, to implement these things, that you can sort of see that I'm not trying to skip the hard parts, but I, I sort of do the hard parts as well uh, in the games that I make. So, uh, I'm Joris Dormans, I'm uh, with a studio called Lulumotion, uh, we make uh, games uh, well, most of the studio is just me right now, but I make games, and there's always a generative comp uh, component to it. Um, and I will be talking about you to you uh, today about this whole idea of cyclic dungeon generation, which is uh, the way I set up the dungeon generator for the game that I'm working on right now. It's called Unexplored, uh, which uh, and it's um, a roguelike game. There's a trailer to it, so I'm going to show you the trailer. Um, we have to probably have to wait just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so here you go. But that would have killed me if we didn't show it because it's his music. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so let's go back to the uh, presentation. Um, yeah, here we go. So as you've seen, it's a traditional roguelike, and level generation is a very big thing in this type of games. Uh, but what it makes, what is different about this game is that it's actually also real time, uh, which means that the gameplay uh, draws a lot of inspiration from action type games, such as Zelda games. And they uh, have uh, a slightly different approach to level design. For them, level design is, is very important. You have to generate locks and keys. Uh, there's, there's pacing considerations that you have to look into. And this is the sort of feel that we wanted to uh, approximate with the level generation for this game. And um, this, these are just, just some samples of levels that have been generated by the, the, the content generator. And I'm quite actually, I'm, right now I'm pretty pleased with results. It's going to be better as we're adding more content and more things for the, gener for the generator to work with. But as you uh, hope, you can see that these levels, they, they're sort of, sometimes they, they're very big and, and, and sort of noisy, but they, they, they typically have a sort of nice feel and a, and a, and a pretty good flow to it. Um, there's a few things that I discovered while working on these things, and that's one of them is that um, Actually, smaller levels seem to be much better than bigger levels. So this is this is a, an end level with just a big field of lava with one dragon in there, and it's just just good enough. You don't when you start generating things, uh, all of, it's all uh, it's always very easy to just generate more things. But actually, constraining yourselves and constraining the generator into generating a few things uh, often gives it a lot more shapes. And as a sort of testimony to um, uh, to the results. Uh, it's, it's unfortunately, it came across it in a debug mode, so there's some debug information there that you should ignore. But this is a, a, a probably the weirdest level that I ever found in the game. Uh, it's, uh, there is a, this is, it's a very weird level where there's a combination of you have rooms, but there's chasms between them, so you get these weird platform things, and there's, it's connected by oh, lots of teleporters and, and bridges that might collapse on you. And it, it, I played through it, it was ridiculously hard, but it's, it was really interesting to, <laughs> to experience this, this type of thing, because I'd never expected 
uh, the game to throw anything like, like this back at me. And that's, for me, that's one of the real reasons why I'll, I'll work with, uh, with, with content. And um, so the goal for me is, is to really create games with levels that feel sort of handcrafted. So that's a, we're sort of advertising. And I'm not quite sure if we, we're there yet, but we seem to have those YouTubers actually that have said these levels, they were hand-designed, right? Uh, and there's this website called Defunct Games. They're very, very critical. Um, uh, and they, 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 but they, they said, and they, if, they, they, if, if we told them that we had a, I had one of my programs, which is me, design these levels, then they would probably might have believed it. And that's interesting because it, that sort of shows that this, what we're trying to do is raising the bar of what you can do with level design. And the real difference, the real giant leap that we took at, uh, at a certain moment uh, was to actually sort of stop generating uh, levels as branching trees and start doing cyclic level design, and that's cyclic dungeon generation. Um, and this picture sort of gives you an idea of, of what the, the, the difference is. But if you look at many, uh, uh, almost all level generators that I came across, they, they, they work on a, on, on, a, on a system that you start, start somewhere start a dungeon, and then you add templates or rooms or things, you, t you, you put a two, uh, add a two at one, and you see there's an, a couple of open connections, and I can add another room and another room and another room. And basically what you do is you, you create a branching t tree. And uh, there's some ways to avoid this, this problem because you have to backtrack a lot. Uh, so what a lot of people do is actually if these two uh, branches are pretty close, you, can, you might actually be able to reconnect them and then sort of create a circle in there, a cycle in there that you, you don't have to backtrack as much. But I came to the realization that if you, if you do this, it's always very haphazard where you, you kind of put the, the, the connections and the cycles that emerge. You have to be sort of lucky whether or not they're interesting or not. A human designer does this as well. Uh, human designers, they, they make dungeons and they say, oh, it's very interesting to make a shortcut here. But this inspiration of this inside of, for the human designer to, to exactly know where to make this, in, uh, make this change, that's very hard to replicate. And that's just not something that you can do randomly. Um, so the realization I, I, I came up with is that if you, if you start, instead of generating a path between two points in, in the generator, I, I, uh, I do two paths, basically. I, I say there's one way over and then another path back. So you get basically get a, a cycle from the start. And cycles you can nest and you can, you can, you can t stack them on each other. So uh, if you just take the simple st structure there, there is, there is, I can ac actually attach another cycle to, to it or uh, 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 to put cycles in cycles. There's a lot of things you can do with these things. But the end results are very, very good. Um, and uh, the inspiration for this this whole idea came from when I was at a, at a workshop, at an academic workshop earlier this year in, in Canada, and we were, we were doing weird things. We were, uh, we were, we were tr trying to make a park generator in, uh, in one day. And this is the, some of the results. So, and, and we were just looking into, okay, what is a sort of evocative space? Well, how, how is a park designed in, in, its, in a way that's interesting? And we were looking at theories of urban planning and actually also hypertext theories. And then we, then we found this idea of, 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 of cycles. And that started me thinking. So if you imagine this, this is a park, uh, uh, it could be a, a park that you walk through or it could actually also be an amusement park. There are typically things like there's a lake with a, with a tower on top, so, but you can go around the lake and there's several parts. There, is, there might be uh, some more wooded areas, there might be open areas, there might be higher areas. And there's different paths to it. But if you, if you do hiking or you do walking through a park, you never want to go, you don't want to backtrack, basically. You want to go, you want to, you want to plan a route in a, in a cycle that, brings, uh, that uh, takes you home in a, uh, along a different uh, route. And this is, this is, this is started, started me thinking. And I started uh, observing this behavior in, in many more ways. I have a, a daughter who's three years old, and, and children like the, at that age, they really love to play. And, uh, she has a very interesting experience of space. So uh, if you, uh, it wasn't very long after that, we were in a, in a f somewhere in a field in a picnic table, and she would just start running circles around the picnic table. If any, anything there that sort of breaks up the space and creates a cycle is very interesting. We have a, friend, a house of a friend where you can uh, run in, in, in a figure eights. You can make figure eights by running through different rooms. And she really, if, she, if, if she's there, she, she just runs around just because the, the layout of the space is so much more interesting than our own home which is basically a branching, branching tree, like most, most, uh, most homes are. Um, and I started to look at 
Um, dungeons designed by a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of Dungeons and Dragons dungeons that are out there that you can find. And if you start looking at the, the, the more interesting maps, uh, the, the maps that have an appeal, there is all these cycles there, right? There's, the, typically, there's multiple ways of going from uh, one point to another. There's interesting routes back, the, 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 the hidden shortcuts. They're always at interesting points, and they always make a complete cycle. The, there's typically, you know, the, sh the shortcut is there is there's multiple ways into this room, but there's, there's a secret shortcut. And a shortcut already means there is, there's two ways to, from getting from point A to B. So this, this started to uh, get me thinking about all these, these different patterns that you can get in, um, in, in, these, uh, in, in these dungeons. And I found that cycles uh, are very, very good at expressing, uh, expressing these paths, uh, of expressing these patterns. So, for example, if you have a, a simple cycle, there's two points, there's a start point, there's a goal point, there's a long way over and a long way back. Um, there's a lot of interesting things that you can do. For example, you could say, well, the, 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 the second route I've generated, uh, I'm going to say there's two alternative routes to the same point, but they, are different, they have a different theme. So one might be fighting monsters, the other, the other might be avoiding traps. Um, there's also um, things like, okay, um, uh, the, the one on the bottom, there is a, a, a key, if there's a locked door at the, the end of the, the, the goal, so I, I explore, I, have to, I go over to the point, I find a locked door, I need to, need to find the key, but there is a, a sort of valve, a, play, a, 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 a fixture in the, in the level that I can get through, but I can't get back. I find the key, now I have to wait, my, find my way back to the starting point, do the a part of the cycle again, and then make my way to the... Uh, to the uh, and then, then, then I can progress through the locked door. And there's several ways of of doing this, and this, uh, and, and if you if you have different properties generated in your cycle, for example, if you have a very long way over but a very short uh, return, there's different things that you can do. So, you, for example, this would, would might be a very good idea to make a, make a secret shortcut, right? So, uh, and then reward players that are actually looking for secrets, or maybe if you have different type of classes in inside your game, you can say, well. If you happen to, if, and I want to reward the, the thief or a different, or the, the wizard or something, then uh, I can use that, that path and, and, make, and theme into that particular character class so that they have a, a bonus experience. Uh, one's, one that I also very, find very interesting is not making a circle, but this is sort of what I call the dramatic si cycle where you actually sort of reveal the goal at the, v at the very beginning. Say so you need to go there, but you can't get there because there is a, uh, a lake in between you or lava, whatever. Uh, and you have to find your way there. Uh, and then maybe you can also already show there's a big monster there that you can see. Uh, so that builds up anticipation and a lot of tension and a lot of things that are really, really interesting to play around with and generate and make sure that the generator can, can work with these things. So there is, um, there's more patterns. So if, if you do the reverse, if you have a very short way to, towards a goal and a very long way back, um, one thing that I like to do is actually um, because in this, in this particular game that I uh, uh, build, you have to go down and you have to go back up. So there's o you, have to, you always need to go back at one point. Uh, and then make sure that the, the, the very short path towards the goal, you can only traverse once. And then you have to find a different route back. So that, that's also setting up expectations, a lot of uh, things about the, uh, of what you might do and what you might expect. Because sort of actually, actually sort of you know, you, uh, if, you, if you use that pattern, the player is walking around and all of a sudden the bridge behind him collapses and there's no, there's no, way, <laughs> no, uh, no easy return for them. So that's, it's, that's an interesting and ex exciting ways of thinking about, about these things. And also, if you do it in, on, a, on a smaller level, there's, sometimes you have these small cycles, uh, there's, there's interesting things you can do. There's very, very uh, con con concise things. For example, if, you, if there is a, a, a goal uh, uh, and a starting point very close to each other, uh, you might have a patrolling monster going around that cycle, and it's already interesting challenge to avoid trying to avoid that monster. Or um, uh, you can actually sort of do a simple lock and key mechanism, but you reveal the, the key so you can see that. Uh, so there's a lot of anticipation and 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 rewarding. Oh, the gambit! I like that. Was uh, like that, that as well. So you can see a reward, uh, and then sort of trap the player there, and then make it very dangerous to get out or something. It's, it's, there's there's a lot of things that you can you can do. Um, and, well, a number of you have seen the article. Of, uh, I started posting and thinking about this, 
and and um, uh, this sort of resonated with a lot of people. Uh, the, 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 the post and control is actually shared a lot. It's, it's, uh, it's about 15,000 times that it's been uh, been viewed. Uh, but also in conversations that I have with, with other designers, there's something about cycles that's really, really important in game design. And and started to thinking longer and longer about it, and, and I realized that um, uh, why it is working and why it's so important. There's, there's something in uh, an interview with I was once read with Shigeru Miyamoto that, that's really sort of triggering this thing. And I think it's cycles uh, sort of for ground growth. And uh, growth as a, as, as a player is a really, really important uh, aspect of, uh, of, of becoming a hero. So the, the, the roguelike RPG uh, game that I'm working on, you, you, you become the hero. You, you go from a nobody to, to, the, 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 to the slayer of the dragon, but you really want to experience that growth, right? And one of the best ways to experience growth is actually to have the player to return to, to the areas that they previously visited, so you can actually sort of n notice the difference in, in your own skills and your own abilities, and, and, and really notice, okay, I, I was here before, I w it was scary, or I could not get past this, this locked door, but now I can. And, um, and that's really important aspect of, of, of game design that Shigeru Miyamoto really um, and puts it all in all his Zelda games, all his Mario games. Uh, he really, he really dis uh, in the, the, uh, the interview that I read with him, there was, he, he was saying, I don't really like RPGs because their growth is always represented by numbers. So the growth is, 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 is just changing the spreadsheets. It's I'm going from strength 12 to 13, or to 13 to 14, and that's not really interesting. I want to make players better players, um, and 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 this is where cycles help, right? So uh, this is is if you if you want to experience that growth, then you have to sort of come to this come back to the same area, but feel stronger, and this this is really important. That's I think why these uh, these cycles are so very important. Um, Okay, we started a little bit late, right? Because I saw it's already officially it's my, my time has passed, but I will, I will try to finish up, uh, wrap up uh, sort of quick. So, how do I get to um, implementing all these things? Well, um, this is sort of a, a very simple, simple version of the content generation as it works in, in the, the game that you just saw. Uh, what I do is actually sort of work with two, two types of representation. I work with graphs. To lay out the, the core structure of, of the um, uh, of the dungeon, and then I tr sort of translate that into tiles and tile map. And I work with graph because implementing or representing cycles in a in a tile map is actually not very uh, that's actually not uh, that's very difficult. Whereas in a graph, it sort of comes comes natural, right? So a graph doesn't really naturally have uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, spatial constraints. So you can actually create cycles very easily. I sort of sidestep the problem of how to translate uh, a, a graph without spatial layout into a time map by actually sort of having a, a, a layout there. But it still uh, it allows me to sort of give, give the, um, the dungeon a structure, uh, work with um, um, uh, a, yeah, very abstract representation before trying to fill in all the details. And actually, if I load the game, the information on the, uh, on the, on the second uh, uh, diagram, the second picture B, uh, is also loaded in the game, and it contains okay which key belongs to which door, uh, and and it, it has a lot of structural information about about the dungeon. Um, I make all these things, and I'm going not going into details here, but if you're interested, you can always you can Google me, and you can find a lot of things because I've been writing about this stuff for a long time. But what I do is actually use transformational grammars. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you have a background in, in, in mathematics or in computer science, then that, that should be somewhat familiar. Um, uh, but, uh, and this is typically things like you look for uh, some things like two rooms, and you can replace that with one room that has a key and another room that ha uh, has a locked door. And then you can have another room that says, well, if I have a room and a key and it's another room there, then you can move the key to the, to the other room. And that, it's already allowing you to create a lot of variations and... and, and um, uh, layout and plans for the cycles. It's basically the things that I work with. Uh, there's a tool called Luloscope that I've developed uh, uh, when I was working at uh, Hoogsoft in Amsterdam. Uh, and it's, it's still, uh, I think if you're interested, you can contact me or the Hoogsoft in Amsterdam to, to see what it is. And there is an article I wrote that lays the groundwork of, the, of a couple of the, these ideas. But here's a more extensive example of, of those things. So this is, for example, uh, um, a graph 
representing a dungeon layout uh, and focusing always on structure. So here I'm talking about keys and locks, but what the keys and locks are, uh, that's not really interesting at, at this point. It might be that the key is an actual key that unlocks a door, but it might also be that the key is a, is a potion that makes you uh, resist heat so you can cross a field of lava, or it might be a potion that gives you levitation, or it might be a particular sword that allows you to uh, defeat a, a particular enemy. Um, I'm really interested in the, in the structural relationships at this point. But you can see there's, there's, a, there's a, a long cycle uh, with a window allowing you to see a particular thing, so you can actually have the, this look ahead. Um, there's a starting point, there's a goal that you need to, need to, need to go to. Um, and I, I, I always try to uh, look at the dungeon structure at, at this level first before and making sure that at this level it works and, and, it, and it's cool and it's, it has a particular sense to it. And, uh, and so I found this is actually already, might actually be too big. Right? So it's, if, if it's four by four, four by five, this, that, that's typically a very good size, at least for the game that I'm working on right now. Um, and these patterns, uh, I will be done before that, I think. Um, these patterns, they, 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 they also stack very interestingly. So here's um, uh, a pattern that, that I use sometimes for, uh, 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 as the main structure of a, of, a, of, a, of a level that I have in the game. It's what I call a key item cycle. This is the, the typical thing that you have in, in Zelda, right? So you, you find this uh, key item, which is a boomerang or a particular sword that allows you to uh, open locks that you, you weren't able to op open before. Uh, and if you enter that level, this is a starting point where you enter that level, uh, you, you can make your way through, and then there's these themed locks that you, you can find. You might not recognize them as, 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 as locks at the point, but you, there's, there's things that there's, you can't go progress through them. There might be a door that you need to unlock a particular key for it. And then at one point, you, you, you go past the valve, so you can't go back. You're in this room. So you're basically locked in a room, but in this room there might be a mini boss as well. But at least you can find the key item there, and there's uh, also a, a themed lock so that you can, uh, that you can uh, make your way through. And then you can complete the cycle, uh, you're back at the starting point, and then you can rem remember, oh right, there's a few more of, more of these doors. So you can actually actively plan to, uh, uh, to make your way through, the, uh, through those points, and then continue on from there on, uh, uh, and, and progress further into the dungeon. So, and it's... And, and, and you can actually do this in, in multiple layers. So I can actually move these themed locks also as well to different layers, uh, to different levels in the dungeon as well. So you can actually make uh, uh, puzzles inside this roguelike that span multiple levels, which is, which is something I think is pretty cool. Oh, sorry. Um, so there is um, still some open uh, issues here. Um, don't think this is easy, right? Um, uh, this is very new for me as well, uh, and, and I've been thinking about these sort of things for a long time. This is very new terrain. Uh, there's a lot of things uh, uh, generating these cycles. It's, it's easy to make mistakes, and it's, it's very hard to get it right. But once you get it right, it's, it's really, really powerful. Um, but I do run into quality as, uh, assurance issues right now. This is one for me, this is one open research question. Uh, if I make changes, if I introduce a cycle like this, are there ways for players to, because uh, um, it's a sort of more tight, tightly designed game, uh, are there ways for players to get, uh, get into a situation that they can't get out of th themselves? Uh, can, can they get themselves trapped? What if they miss a key? All these sort of things. Uh, if I introduce a new uh, rule somewhere, does it, does it sort of uh, create problems if it's combined with a, another rule? I've, I've, the, the game that I showed, it's already on early access. There's people that have been playing for 200 hours uh, uh, and, uh, and then somebody else is posting a bug and he says, I've never seen that bug before and, it, and it's been playing for 200 hours. So that's, 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 uh, that's uh, interesting. And also what I found is that at one point, um, so there's a sort of problem of an uncanny valley for uh, uh, content generation. At one point if the level generator gets very good, um, then people, uh, people's expectations seem to change. Then they, uh, uh, then they s sort of, uh, if, if, uh, if, if, if people know the levels are generated, they approach the game in a different way than they, when they think it's, uh, it's hand designed. Uh, uh, and, they, they, and actually they, they sort of, uh, if you're in a hand designed game, you, you know you're never going to end up in a place where you can't get out, uh, even if you do all the weird things. Uh, but in, in, a, in a roguelike, 
you, uh, you sort of more careful with, with those, uh, those things. So you, okay, you, don't, you, you don't consume a potion that you might not be able to get back to get to this point behind the lava, and now all of, all of a sudden I'm stuck. This is something that you don't expect in a handcrafted game, but you might be more aware of if, if, if you know it's, it's generated. So this is, this is an interesting, um, so an interesting uh, problem uh, that I'm not quite sure how to resolve, or even if it is resolved, if the answer is making it better, that, that that's might, might be, uh, might be the, the, the best solution, but I'm not quite sure how far we're going to get with that. And also, um, I've shown you, I think about 12, 13 patterns in there. Um, there's so many more that I've already uh, used in the game, there's so many, and it's so easy to find them. There's, a, so, there's so much, all of a sudden, there's so much stuff to explore here that uh, uh, yeah, it would be very interesting to see more people uh, working with these things. So, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Um, uh, I'm Joris Dormans. You can find the, 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 the game I show you. Can, you can find it online. There's a Twitter. Uh, but look for us on Steam. And if, if you, you really want to try out how it feels to play levels that have this site, big dungeon generator behind it, you can, you can have a go. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Joris. I, th I think we have, uh, uh, we can do a question, one or two. Uh, are there any questions? There's one there. I'm going to show this microphone out there. But ah, yeah. microphone. Thank you for a nice speech. I have a question. You've mentioned uh, the cycles method of uh, level design. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting to explore it at the start of the level, but when you finally find the key, you have to go back the same way. Isn't it boring that y all you see uh, are corpses of the slayed enemies and already re resolved uh, puzzles? How can we fight uh, the boring of going back the same way? Right. Uh, the, well, the cycles, the, so uh, go back to one of the lock and key cycles that I have. Um, I try to avoid that as much as I can. Uh, there is there's a one way of uh, actually making it very short. Uh, but if you look at the um, lock and key cycle there, the one here, uh, you don't you go, go all back all the way. You basically, you, you keep going on forward, and then you end up at, at the same place, and then you have to traverse uh, a, 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 a slight of the half of the level in this case again. But you're not really backtracking. You're actually doing it in the same direction, which is uh, already a d completely different feel. Uh, and there's also there's, there's ways of getting around. You can trigger new <laughs> content there uh, once you have the key. There's, there's ways of, of making keep, keeping that interesting. But actually. Um, Going through uh, a level twice doesn't necessarily have to be a bad experience. You have to be careful because you don't want to use it too often. Uh, one of the things, I, as, as I already told you, you can make those levels very complicated. I don't want to use more than one or two keys in a level. That's, that's way too, uh, more than two is, is really, really too much. Because then, indeed, you have to, you're forcing the player to backtrack so more often. But you want to have people to return it to the same places, uh, even if it involves a little bit backtracking. But not too much. So you want you're right that you want to you don't want to do it too often. You I'm not quite sure. If, I think one and a half cycle is, is is good enough. So you can experience this uh, this a little bit. But you I try to avoid doing a, a, a full cycle twice unless the cycle is very short. Then it's okay. And also uh, I prefer now to uh, use a, a structure like this if I know that the, uh, the the A part the first part is actually not too long, right? So then you you, you get back to the same place, uh, but uh, and you have to experience some. Uh, some uh, uh, backtracking, but not too much. Thank you, uh, Joris. We don't have any time for more questions, unfortunately. So I'd, I'd, I'd say give another round of applause to Joris. Applause